I'm going to bring up a friend of mine who's a warrior. He's also a politician. And he's just a great guy. He's, he's the first combat veteran in the California State Assembly. He's a 10-year Marine who's seen, has seen deployments in Iraq, all over Africa, all over the places, Yemen and the places that nobody wants to go and we all want to we all want to just not even talk about and see, but he's done a job for the United States of America. He's now doing a job for the state of California. He wants to do a job for the city of San Diego. I want him to take over the whole state and then go to Washington, D.C. He's an awesome dude. Please welcome my friend, your assemblyman, the second term, by the way, former Marine, 10 years, Nathan Fletcher. He has a two-year-old and a two-week-old, and he's still here. His wife Mindy's at home, and she's a friend too. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Hey, thank you. Uh, good morning. I, I brought my little guy, who's uh, who's two. He uh, he was really excited. We got here early. He wants to see the room rooms. What he calls them. <laughs> I told my wife, I, my, my my other boy, uh, Zach's here with me. My other boy, Caleb, is uh, two weeks old. Yesterday. And I had wonderful. Uh, it proves you don't have to sleep. It is a crutch for the week. I told my wife I wanted to bring Caleb too, because I said it's early. You know, early in their life, you got to show them the finer things in life. And my wife said he's two weeks old, and I said, well, that's about right. She said you're an idiot. I brought one boy. One out of two is not bad. But uh, it's, it's my honor to be here. I. Uh, uh, Mike said, hey, we'd like to have you come. Uh, I said, I'd love to come. He said, would you like to say a few words? I said, did you really ask a politician if you wanted to say a few words? <laughs> but uh, I'll be brief. My, my buddies call me Spam, uh, scumbag politician and Marine, uh, which really is the important part. And when I, when, I, when I come out to groups, that really is, uh, I think, and always will be the, the defining part, in addition to your faith and your family. But when you talk about what you did professionally doing that, now, I talked to the Commandant uh, about a month ago, and we're changing it. It's no longer former Marine, it's just Marine Veteran. Once a Marine, always a Marine. No longer on active or reserve status. I was down at MCRD not too long ago where I went to boot camp. I was a staff sergeant when I got out. Drill instructor came up to me. I had a little lapel pin on, a little Marine Corps pin. He said I was lost and wandering around. He said, are you a Marine? I said, absolutely. I said, no longer on active or reserve status, but once a Marine, always a Marine. He said, well, if you're a Marine and you're lost, you must certainly be looking for the barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, you know, dude, it's my honor to be here, uh, surrounded by true patriots who are not only standing here and riding today, but true patriots who are on these walls. As you walk around these walls, you see the story of what it means to be an American of what it means to serve, of what it means to sacrifice. And right in line with that sacrifice, you see the story of our faith and the important role that that plays. Every combat veteran knows that when you go through that, you go through some awful experiences, but there's also some good outcomes. You come out of some of those things you go through, and you have a renewed faith. You have a renewed commitment to your family, you also have a renewed sense of what really matters in life. I can't tell you how often I get on the phone, look, we got a lot of problems in California. We have a lot of problems. I was asked uh, not too long ago, they said, you're a brand new member of the legislature, it's the first time you've ever been elected to office. They said public opinion polling just came out, says the California legislature has a 14% approval rating. They said, what does that say to you as someone who just got here? And, we got a lot of problems. I said the first thing that came to mind, I said it tells me that 14% of California is not paying very much attention. <laughs> I said, who are these people that approve of the job of this body? <laughs> but we got a lot of problems. We got a record deficit. We got a lot of our people that are hurting. Our working families. My dad was a factory worker. We've had a realignment of our economy. It's difficult. It's tough. We're struggling with where we go, what happens to the middle class. What's the proper role of government, where should it be? Abroad we're struggling. Afghanistan is now the longest war in the history of America. The longest war. 
Our people are divided. Our challenges are great. You even hear people wonder are America's best days behind it. But when you come out and you see this cross, and you see these walls, and we come out and we see each and every one of you, which is the fabric of America, you know that America's not broken. Our political system may be, but our people are not. Our people are strong. They're industrious. They have faith. They're compassionate. They're charitable. They care about their country. They care about our flag. They care about our children, and they care about our future. And I'm going to close by telling you two quick stories about why America's strong and why our best days are yet to come. One of these stories is on this wall. The other one ought to be. I was at, MC, at uh, Miramar not too long ago, and Colonel Ritchie, who's there, was telling a story of a young Marine. And both of these stories, I think, tell the generational difference. We got a lot of generations here. We got Korea here. We got Vietnam here. We got Iraq. We got Afghanistan. But I want to leave with you that the younger generation that's serving now is just as tough as all of you are. They're just as brave. They're just as courageous. They're just as committed to this country. And Colonel Ritchie told the story of a Lance Corporal who got hit with a roadside bomb, took serious shrapnel in his back and his legs, was injured gravely. They flew him home. When he landed at Miramar, the brass, top brass went on to meet with him. And they said, son, we're about to come off the plane. We've got your family, got some of your buddies out here. He grabbed him and he said, Colonel, he said, I need a favor. And they said, all right, son, what is it? And this Lance Corporal, 19 years old, who, by the way, was in the second grade on September 11th. Hmm. He joined knowing exactly what he was signing up for. He said, I need a favor. The colonel said, what is it? He said, I want to walk off this plane. Don't let him carry me. He said, I don't want my family to think they hurt me. I don't want my buddies to think they hurt me. And I don't want there to be any doubt that I'll be getting back on this plane and going back and rejoining my unit. That's a 19-year-old Marine with serious injuries in his legs and his back whose only request is don't let him carry me off this plane because I don't want anyone to know I'm hurt. <coughs> There's another story that's on these walls that I told the city council, Mike, when we went down there, when we debated this wall, I had just come back from Iraq and I came down in open session and I told him the story of Marine Corporal Jason Dunham. Jason was a 22-year-old high school star athlete from a small rural town in upstate New York. He was an athlete, baseball, basketball. His 414 single season batting average still holds his school record. He had the tall, lean, athletic build you associate with a poster boy Marine. Clear eyes, square jaw. The oldest of four, he always wanted to be a Marine, and he wanted to return to his hometown and go into law enforcement. After high school, Jason Dunham joined the United States Marine Corps. He became a machine gunner with Company K, 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, and stationed at 29 Plums. In 2004, Jason Dunham's time in the Marine Corps was over. He had served his country, he had deployed, he had served honorably. His lifelong dream of going home and being with his family, pursuing a career, was right there. But as he was home before he got out, he told his mom at the birthday party for his little sister who had just turned 12 that he was going to stay in. He was going to extend his time because his unit was going back to war and he wanted to go with them. He told his family his actions were making our country and our world safer. So he voluntarily extended his time in service. His unit was assigned duty in the dangerous Al Anbar province of Iraq. And on April 14, 2004, Jason Dunham was on patrol and they saw a suspicious vehicle. As they approached the vehicle, 
a terrorist in a black jumpsuit lunged from the vehicle. He didn't think about one day having a couple little boys of his own. He didn't think about opening day at the ballpark or being a grandpa. Jason Dunham thought about his fellow Marines. He thought about his commitment to service. He thought about the ultimate sacrifice. And the 22-year-old Marine thrust his body on top of the grenade, taking the full force of the explosion in his chest and head. As the smoke cleared, Jason Dunham lay on the ground bleeding. The three Marines whose lives had been saved by his warning rushed to his side to attempt to administer first aid. Jason Dunham never regained consciousness. And eight days later, on April 22nd, 2004, at 4.43 p.m. at Bethesda Naval Hospital, with his parents Dan and Deb Dunham at his side holding his hand, and moments after the Commandant had awarded him the Purple Heart, Jason Dunham died. On April 11, 2007, at a White House ceremony, President Bush awarded Corporal Jason Dunham the Medal of Honor. An article in the American Legion magazine summed up the life of Jason Dunham as follows. As a Marine, he was taught that honor, courage, and commitment are not just words. They're core values for a way of life that elevates service above self, he was taught that while America's founding truths are self-evident, they also need to be defended by good men and women willing to stand up to determined enemies. On a dusty road in western Iraq, Jason Dunham gave his life so that others may live in peace, his fellow Marines, and each and every one of us. He understood and lived John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this. And he laid down his life for his friends. The story of Jason Dunham is the story of America. It's the story of the Revolution, Civil War, World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan. It's a story that are told on these walls it's a story of a generation, it's a story of a commitment to faith and freedom, and it's a story of why our country will forever remain strong. We are a tough people. We are an industrious people. We are a faithful people and a patriotic people. Our challenge is to ensure that our politicians and our system of government reflect that same basic American yeah. value. And you do that by participating in the process. You do that by speaking out about issues you care about. You do that by voting. You do that by advocating. A couple years ago, I ripped a magazine article out of a magazine I was reading. It stuck with me, and I'm sure all of you have seen it and heard it. I taped it to the wall in my office. I wrote down its words, and I'll leave you with this today because it really does sum up the future of where we're going, why we're strong, and why we should all enjoy today, take serious the challenges, but know we'll forever be strong. The article said, we don't do fear. Over the last 105 years in the saddle, we've seen wars, conflict, depression, recession, resistance, and revolution. We've watched a thousand hand-wringing pundits disappear in our rearview mirrors. But every time this country has come out stronger than before because chrome and asphalt, the distance between you and whatever the world can throw at you, freedom and wind outlast hard times, and the rumble of an engine drowns out all the blah, blah, blah on the evening news. <laughs> if 105 years have proved one thing, it's that fear sucks, and it doesn't last long. So screw it, let's ride. Thank you for letting me join you. Bless our country, our veterans, each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.